Alexander Yoakum. Alexander, thanks for joining us. Broadly, what message are you getting from the regional more, more troubled banks here? Yeah, so I think Friday gave us a lot of information. Um, so if you think about it, we saw the four large banks report on Friday. That's about a third of the deposits in the entire banking industry, and their deposits were about flat which means that the rest of the banking industry, the rest two-thirds, is going to have to account for that 500-plus deposit billion outflows. Uh, we saw M&T today. Uh, they were about 3 percent down in, in deposits. Um, but for other regional banks, we could potentially see significantly larger declines. Um, so that's probably one of the main things to watch for. But isn't that sort of a, a – I hate the word transitory now – but isn't that a temporary issue if deposit – Flows have stabilized, as we've been told, by Treasury and the Fed right now going forward, or you still think it's going to be a big driver? So I think it'll be a big driver for this quarter because we don't know which banks are going to miss on deposits. And the banks that do miss on deposits significantly, they'll likely see their net interest margins compress significantly, and therefore their profitability will be down. So even banks, I mean, you saw PNC uh, on Friday, their deposits were flat, but even they had uh, net interest margin compression. Uh, M&T Bank also had net interest margin compression, whereas the large banks actually saw expansion in the first quarter. Um, so that's probably one thing that's uh, you know leading to a little bit of the underperformance as of late. I wonder what you also made of the loan growth numbers Friday night in banks, both large and small, and whether or not that was net encouraging in terms of I mean, as we're watching for any kinds of, uh, of shrinkage in loan growth. Yeah, so I did look at that. Um, that was encouraging. Uh, before that, they had actually looked pretty bad. Um, it had really looked like loan growth was coming down pretty significantly. Uh, so that, that was definitely encouraging. But uh, in general, I am definitely expecting lower loan growth uh, for the rest of the year than you know we would have said just a month or two ago, uh, especially for banks that do have those significant deposit outflows. They get less flexibility. They really do not want to be in a position where they run out of deposits like Silicon Valley Bank. So for banks like that, I would expect them to really cut back on their loans. Finally, you know, there's been some uh, some work done on what, what like Barclays, for example, what argues is a an additional wave of outflows as they, they they call them sleepy depositors who basically read the paper one day and realize, hey, I'm getting cheated out of a much better rate somewhere else. Do you think that's likely? Yeah, but that would be more of a slow decline. Uh, and we did see that last year. So that was, you know, more like a percent or so deposit outflows a quarter, uh, whereas this quarter we're going to see a lot more than that. So after this quarter, it will probably return to the, you know, maybe a 1% a quarter uh, deposit outflows. Um, and then, you know, if banks don't want that to happen, right, if they're running out of deposits, they're going to really have to increase that rate they pay on deposits. And like I said, that's going to impact uh, profitability. Uh, but I would just say that because bank multiples are down so much, you know, a lot of these banks are training at March. 2020 levels, so think peak pandemic. You know, for banks that do not see a big hit to profitability, for banks that do not see significant deposit outflows, especially those regionals, you know, they could really pop on earnings, like you're seeing a little bit today with uh, M&T. And Schwab, which is notable, 2.7 percent higher. Kramer notes the bears need to break this one badly. It's so important to the banking crisis. It is higher right now. So, so is it all just about earnings pressure going forward, or have we? Have the regulators eliminated the risk of another blow up like we've seen with SVB? Yeah, so I do think it's mostly about profitability going forward. I mean, you've seen that the volatility in bank stocks has really come down after that initial, you know, week where we saw extreme volatility. But as you had mentioned, you know, the KRE is not really recovering. So there is still concern, but it's less about solvency and more about profitability.